Sometimes different geographical regions decide to share the same currency and form a currency union. There are several reasons why they may wish to do this. The first is that it generates credibility. By eliminating the discretion of central bankers, weak areas can benefit from the reputation of stronger ones and therefore control inflation. Second reason is that it facilitates trade and investment because it lowers volatility, increases confidence and reduces transaction costs. A third reason is that it can serve political goals. But these benefits will only occur if those regions constitute an optimal currency area. And economists point to three main criteria. The first is that ideally there will be similar economies with close integration and therefore respond to similar economic shocks. This would imply that monetary policy is appropriate for the whole currency area. If monetary policy isn't appropriate for the whole economic area and there are different economic shocks, then the second criteria is that there's labour market flexibility. For example, labour mobility, adaptable skills or flexible wages will allow the markets to adjust such that different interest rates prevail. The third main criteria is fiscal transfers. In the UK, for example, when there's growth in London, money gets redistributed to poorer regions through welfare payments. And indeed, many people have argued that the problem in the Eurozone is that there's monetary union without fiscal union. However, historically, the US has formed an effective currency area despite having limited federal transfer payments. Rather than think of fiscal transfers as the third criteria, we can think of the first two, similar economic shocks and labour market flexibility, as being the economic preconditions and fiscal transfers as one of a number of potential political backstops. If you don't have an optimal currency areas, fiscal transfers may be one mechanism. Another, though, is external devaluation. This is when one region would leave the currency union and restore or adopt their own currency. By reducing the value of their currency, this can increase exports and generate some growth. But if the reason for the currency union is political, then admitting defeat is likely to be off the table. Indeed, in the case of Greece, leaving the euro is not politically possible, and therefore they're forced into an internal devaluation. This is where exports are increased through lower wages and an increase in competitiveness. The problem with this is that waiting for prices to adjust can take time and be costly. But the only real alternative is outright default. A default is one option, and interestingly, it's been used in several other cases. In 2008, California had a budget crisis in the United States, and interestingly, the possibility of a Californian default did not raise any questions at all about whether California should leave the dollar area. Indeed, possibly the threat of default is one reason why a currency area can survive in the first place. Ultimately, if these economic preconditions aren't met, then there are important political backstops that can be made. The difficulty, though, is that these imply important and difficult political decisions.